sorority fraternities or groups, that you do that same ritual. Again, as the biography stated, my name is Supernova Swam, also known as the Hip Hop Medicine Man. I, uh, my organization that I am represent, have been representing since 1995, almost 20 years, over 20 years now, is called Unified Hood, Yoga Hood. I've been an active blood banger, not banger, but builder, for the last 20 years. And y'all see the distinguishment I said banging and building. When I say banging, what do you get when I say banging? Talk out, come on. When I say building, what do you get? Okay, so what is really discussed in the street tribe community, also known as gang community, is a demographic that I represent called the brothers and sisters that hold the Najaji knowledge. Okay, it's in every set, it's in every tribe. And the responsibility of those keepers is to pass on the oral traditions and pass on the original intent. Because of pop culture, because of brothers and sisters going in and out of jail and lack of accountability, a lot of the original intent principles are lost. So something that I, that I um, in my heart, decided to do for a very long time was to uphold the original intent of principles and teach from that. Being a blood, my family, I have family from South Central and from Watts, so I have also relatives that are not only bloods, but also Crips. Being raised in Brooklyn, New York, around the time when uh, the Bloods were, were in the East Coast, emerging in the East Coast, mainly in New York and New Jersey, um, around 95, the same year the first William Man was, you know, uh, you, if you was in the streets and community, you could not escape, you know, the, the impact of that. So because I've had the advantage to have relatives um, in the West Coast, and I was actually out in the West Coast before and after the, the uprisings, the 92 uprisings, okay? The Night of Horizons was a result of the Rodney King beating. And um, various tribes from Watts, Watts was the ones that set it off, and then South Central, the Compton, of various Crippled Blood sets came together to make a ceasefire and pretty much <coughs> unify the hood. So as a youth visiting my family out there, I was always inspired by that. And um, I felt the power in that, even though I really didn't understand, I was real young, I didn't understand the dynamics being from the East Coast, but I would visit my relatives and have to be in that culture. And I know because I have relatives on both sides, I always wanted understood why we have a conflict. So when it came up in when it came up in the East Coast and our neck of the woods, um, I knew that I had a responsibility because my elders out there gave me responsibility because I've been hearing about these bloods out here and, and wilding out. And because your family is who your family is, you got to be out here, you know, teaching and building and teaching the intent. So I, I you know, I, I took it on myself to study to really get in tune and to align myself with brothers and sisters here with the progressive and make that cross coast alignment with the communities that were trying to really um, do something different, you know? And it's been an uphill battle because the ignorance um, is much more popular. People tend to run with the uh, the negativity more than the awareness. In New York, in New Jersey, we're unique because not only do you have Crips and Bloods out in our um, demographic street trials, we, we also have the Antis, we have Latin Kings and Queens. Um, we also have uh, various fractions of the Gangster Disciples and those of the GDs. We also have uh, very small fractions of vice lords and black peace zones representing for the people's nation. So it's very unique in, in, in uh, the East Coast because uh, the last 20 years, those uh, amalgamated tribes sometimes came together, most times fought, most times killed each other and had a disconnect. So one of the things that I focus on in my work is finding the, the connectivity, finding the civil line. I, my, my speaking and my building is never about, well, with the two elders outlined, you know, because I have a whole nother awareness that I live from. Because I've been, and I am in the culture, I have it, I have direct clarity to a lot of things that are misrepresented. The first thing I want to do, can I volunteer? I, I like this brother, he's all, he's all in red, let me just have the brother come up here. Give it up for brother Red. No, don't say trips, all love. Red, blue, everybody love. Hold this flag up. Hold it up. So, <laughs> hold it up real well, brother. <laughs> okay, space the crowd. So, we're gonna open it by breaking down something that you all probably do not know. Well, let me ask, I'm not gonna assume anything. Do y'all know what this means? I got a better question. Is that, is that scarf directly synonymous <coughs> with the bloods? Or did y'all take that, or did the bloods take that image and create no, I just asked you, do you know what this means? What does this mean? 
No, I, I, I just wanted to ask. Okay, the, well, you, you've seen it associated with bloods. Yeah, I did. Okay, good. So it is. Anybody else knows what this means, though? Besides it just being something that a flag that, or a rag or a flag, depending upon you speak to, represents the bloods. Anybody knows what it means? Does anybody know that this, this is actually a meaning? All of this in here is a meaning. Right? Okay, so one of the things that we do with gene knowledge is that we, we speak about the original intent. And the information that has not necessarily been kept, right? And so my job uh, as, a, as a big homie is to remind, right? And remind based upon the symbolisms, the principles, the original intent to inspire you to make a choice. So when you deal with young brothers and sisters out here who are banging, right? The thing is, <coughs> if you are true, like anything, if you're true to what it is about, then you're real, right? But if something is genetically modified. Like to say an apple. If you eat a genetically modified apple, is it a real apple? Well, it has a little bit of it in it, right? But then what happens? It, 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 it has majority of what? Genetic change, it changes the chemical structure. So is the apple in its original state? Oh, so is it a real apple? Is it a real apple? I said real apple. A genetically modified apple is a real apple? It's okay. Okay. No. Okay. It's not real. It has no. real means origin, original. Okay. It has it has traces of the apple in it. It tastes like apple, right? But it's not a real apple. Okay. So, and if it was real, then you would have something called organic, right? Hence, OG, original. You follow me? Okay, so, are you good, brother? I'm good. Stick that side, but you got that short. It's good. Hold that, hold that flag up. Okay, so check it out. Thing about it is, the brothers, let's talk about the bloods. So the bloods that you see in hip-hop culture, it's a lot of them in hip-hop culture, talking about Sue Wolf and talking about the red flag. I mean, it's a, it's a bunch of them. In the 90s, Snoop and them were doing that a lot. You know, that, that was the influence. A lot of, of blue-red, a lot of, lot of uh, blue, right? But in the 2000s, everybody seems to be a blood these days in pop culture with it, right? But nobody's actually telling you what this is. Because if you knew what this was, it means you would have to be, the word is accountable. Once I tell you what it truly means, right, then you have a choice to be organic or a GMO. You follow me? I'm about to take you on here, okay? So, according to OGT Rogers, an original, he's one of the original um, founding members of the Black Peace Stone Bloods that is in what they call the jungles. Who, who saw training day? You remember the, 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 uh, the, you remember the hood that, that uh, Denzel was saying, King Kong ain't got nothing on me. That, so that's the jungles hood. That's a real hood. That's a real hood. It's called the jungles. And the Black Peace Stone brothers, that's where they, that's where Black Peace Stone bloods are where they at. There. Real quick, camera B. The interesting thing about the Black Peace Stones is that their origin, they're the only uh, tribe, street tribe in L.A. that is not originally from L.A. Meaning they were, they were a charter. They were originally from Chi-Town, Chicago. So originally, that charter would have been under the five star or the five, what they saw, the five point star, People's Nation. But T. Rogers, when he was young, him and his brother uh, moved out there, and he got permission from his elders back in Chicago to start a chapter. And so the, the, before they were called Bloods, you know, um, the Black Peace Stone were their own, you know, indigenous family that was out there doing their thing. And, um, and we'll go into the principles of the five, five point star and the Peace Stones in a second. But here's a little backstory. So, According to T. Rogers, who was an uh, author of the uh, Sidewalk University and a, and a mentor, OG mentor of mine, very respected in hip hop and respected in the gang community, the street tribe community, his definition, which, was, which is supported by a lot of the, uh, what they call real rights originals, but a lot of the youth have no idea. The red in the bandana or the flag represents the blood of the black people and brown people that were shed in the struggle of North America. That means all of us in the struggle, everybody who went through the struggle and continue to struggle has shed blood in this country. That's what the red represents. The black in the bandana represents black people. The black people in this country that have indigenous blood going to Africa, that have indigenous blood to the native blood family, and that have been amalgamated in this country ever since. This is coming from the Triple OG. Okay? And the white in here represents the celestial bodies, the celestial bodies, the heavenly stars. They represent 
that which guides us, meaning that um, when you see the, the homies pour out some uh, alcohol or some liquid, found at libation, for somebody they lost. So the stars represent the ancestors or the, or the heavenly bodies, that which is guiding us, our physical bodies, our black selves on earth. Thank you, brother. Get up for this, brother. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Please learn something. This is what the red flag means. I gave you the meaning of the red flag. Did you, you didn't know that before today. This is the true meaning. It's not something supernova made up. It's something that's what they call from the motherland, from LA, that's from one of the original fathers, founding fathers, that's been active since the late 60s. So it came from his mouth. Okay? And that's what it means. Now, imagine a generation that were accountable to the meaning. They were taught that meaning, and every time they were so-called brought home or brought into the game, they were given that as their food, their knowledge. And they were taught to live that and to apply that in their lives. What do you think? Do you think the clips that the elder was showing, do you think those clips will really be in existence? Yeah. You think? You do? I do. Okay. You, you think of brothers and sisters that knowledge yourself, they wouldn't be, they would be doing that. Well, they was doing that before. No, no, no. But brother, you're missing the point. Well, I will continue. My point of saying that is, most of what you see is a lack of knowledge of self. They don't know who they are. Anybody got knowledge of self, right? right. Now, and, and then it's part of a community that enforces knowledge of self, mm -hmm. right? They will be doing different. Right. So that's the example of the red flag, is that most chapters don't even live by the principle, don't even know what it is. They follow them because somebody else is doing it. And then you got generations of young brothers and sisters being brought home, as we, we call it, brought in and not knowing how to sell. The East Coast. Interesting about the East Coast is that you ever anybody ever heard the word five with a five? Five? Okay. So the five has two different meanings. Come on, my brother again. Give it up for my brother. He's a good Okay, how would you figure out how many like this, brother? This, this hand, this hand. Okay? Now go like this. Like that. Okay, the five is put, put representing the five pointed star. You go like this, right? Now, I'm going to spell it out for you. B L O O D. Blood. Okay? Thank you, brother. That's one. Two. Allah. Five point. The Five Point Star was influenced by brothers first in the People's Nation in Chicago that were inspired by the El Rukans, brothers who were Moors, who had Islamic teachings in their literature. Okay? And so the tenets of the five came from that. The bloods looked at the five as breaking down the body. So when I met you and, and, we, and, we, and we pieced up and we formed the Five Pointed Star, right? There was one, there was one black body to the next to the next black body. Right? And then we were shining. Like our family in the stars. You feel, feel me? Something you ain't gonna learn in no YouTube or no gangland series. I'm giving you the real stuff, right? Keep listening. We talked about Chicago. We talked about the five point. We said there were two different aspects. The blood aspect and then the root of the five star coming from the people nation. These are the acronyms. T, F, J, P, L. What do you think T stands for? Truth. What does F stand for? Family. Who? Family. Family. I hear both. Family. 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 I heard faith. Family. If I say freedom? Freedom. 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 Okay. J. Justice. Oh, yeah. Look at y'all. <laughs> Subconscious. Look, look at y'all. You can try it in the low. <laughs> P. What's the P stand for? I don't know. Huh? Peace. I hate more peace. Okay, we'll check peace. True. What does L stand for? Love. Uh. That brothers and sisters is the five point star. Again, I tell you, and I ask you, if brothers and sisters were enforced and held accountable to the five when they pieced each other, held account and lived from the five, not as a GMO, but as an organic, an original, again, we'll be in the dynamic space. Let's continue. We have the six point star. The six point star is mostly associated with Judaism. Star of David. Y'all know, y'all familiar with that, right? Okay. But even beyond that, we have any brothers and sisters here from India? Oh, good, good. Salute to your family. Y'all, y'all considered black too, even though y'all may not know it. And uh, y'all are. 
Um, according to the Dalif, salute to the Dalif, the original ones of India, salute to y'all. That represents also the tetrahedron, the male and female forces coming together. So now, interesting enough, this is in, comes up in the folk nation, okay? In the East Coast, most GDs or folks align with Crips. Crips are not folks, and folks are not Crips, but they have an alignment. So sometimes a, 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 a Crip may say, what up, Six? What's, what's cracking, Six? They may just say, just because, because they're not that, but they acknowledge the foundation. They acknowledge the alignment. Just like the five can be acknowledged from the blood side, also from the people, right? So you see how the tribes connect. Everything is dealing with, our family deals with five, sixes, Bs, and Cs. So we deal with numerology in sacred alphabets here. See, I'm rooted this is metaphysics. We don't even understand what's going on. The brother early asked about the gangster. Well, the gangster is, is right now how we identify as being warriors. See, we're naturally warriors. We, we, you know, we come from thousands of African warrior tribes and thousands of native blood tribes on this land. So it's in our DNA. We don't know how to articulate it. And it's being cultivated. So it comes out the bang. But the need to actually be a warrior is always in us. Some of us join the military, like myself. I'm an active, I, I was an active duty combat, now I'm a veteran. So I, I did that, went to Afghanistan and all of that, did all of that, right? Survived for a time, just to, just to share this message with you. Look how awesome the creator is, right? So look at that. Mm -hmm. But the warrior tribe, and being a warrior is part of who we are, right? But we have to just direct it and get the right information. Let's talk about this six here. So this six pointed star, with our gangs and disciples, you ever hear that uh, that song by um, by Rick Ross? I feel I feel like y'all know the lyrics. <laughs> Big Meech, who else? Larry Hoover. Larry Hoover. Do you know who Larry Hoover is? He's the founding member of this, of the Black Gangs and Disciples, or the Gangs and Disciples, <clears throat> the Almighty Six, the Folk Nation. Folk is also an acronym. Forever our love knowledge. Folk. Look at this. You hear this now? You hear all this input. Now this is this, this, this a nation of God's earth? Is, is this a nation of Islam? It's rooted. The knowledge itself is there. The reason why it's not in the rap lyrics because the balance is propagated. But see, if we have knowledge itself, it's all rooted in righteousness. We just gotta remind ourselves. And we gotta remind these young brothers and sisters if we're gonna claim it, then you gotta claim it from the organic side and not the GM what? Oh, oh, no, no, no GMO. <laughs> so, let's talk about this. What do you think the L represents? Love. 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 Yep, right. Look at y'all. The next L. Life. Yep. Liberty. Loyalty. 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 Yep. Okay. Knowledge. Knowledge. Come on, W. Come on, y'all. Wisdom. Come on, y'all. Unity. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Y'all see it? Are y'all witnessing what's happening here? This is profound. Imagine if we put went to hood to hood and state to state and reminded these brothers and sisters to be accountable. We're not going to break the gang up. We're going to build the G's up with their G knowledge. See, you can yell at them all you want. You can break down all you want. But when you speak their information and empower them, say, homie, I'm calling you out. I'm not calling you out to disrespect you. I'm calling you out to break this. I'm calling you out, homie. I'm G-checking you to love, life, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. I'm G-checking you to truth, freedom, justice, peace, and love. So now the question becomes, if the five and six are built on knowledge and self-empowerment principles, why are we bent? If, 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 if you hear them say five popping, six dropping, or six cracking, five splattering, why is that based upon not the GMO, but the OG intent? That means somebody's false flag. Somebody ain't living the true book. Because the deeper you get into this literature, and I can't go, I don't have time for me to go deep with you, I, I can go deep. I had a whole PowerPoint everything for y'all. I, I came to drop that ancestral bomb on y'all tonight. But I'm just working with y'all. I found a spirit to keep the in this song. <laughs> Spirit don't stop. I'm running away. I had to put that together for five hours today. 
faith, but the spirit don't stop. We're going to still get to this knowledge, right? But this, I want you to ponder that because see, when we open up today, we, we say, say a word of power, right? And then if you don't notice, every time we went around, the words got powerful. The words got bigger. The spirit of the ancestors were here with us. Every time we went down the line, you, each one of you represents a, a million, a million ancestors in this room right now. How many is this in this room? About 20 in this room? 30? Mm -hmm. So we 30 million strong in this room. You may be a one body, right? But guess what? It's 30 million ancestors in this power right now. And I'm not talking to your mind, brothers and sisters. I'm talking to your subconscious. See, when I asked y'all about that five and six, y'all knew it. I didn't say nothing to you. Y'all told me what it was. That means that's in your DNA. <laughs> you already a builder. You, you put in work in the spirit already, right? So now, each one teach one is what we say as blood. But then, of course, the rap, little man ain't gonna tell you that in his lyrics. God bless him, my brother, not, not no shots. Jim Jones, not, not tell you that. But that's our literature. God bless the brother, being my statement, no, no shots, because we're about building that banging. What I'm saying is that there's information lacking, right? We have to, we have to, we have to hold each other accountable to what's going on. So let's, let's continue. I need two readers. Two volunteers, let's step up, come on. One, two, come on. Clap it up for them. <laughs> Thank you, my brother, brother. So this is, uh, you hold that open. I was let you know right second. I've been passing out this pamphlet from the, since the 90s, up until maybe about um, five years ago before I went into the service, right? Um, and this is called the G Dollars pamphlet. I'm about to update it shortly, but this is very old. But something that's old is very sacred to us. You know, what we're talking about is old stuff because what's current is, is gen genetically modified, right? But this information is a reminder, a tuning fork, to let you know, when the brother talked about earlier about uh, gang lifestyle and gang language and gang code, but this is stuff they ain't told you about. This is stuff that there's a percentage of us that live this and hold accountable to, right? And then we strive every day, we put our lives on the line to remind other brothers and other hoods about it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, I can't even tell you how many times Crips ran up on me because I was passing out these. And guess what? I, I, I never got jumped. Ashe. Never got stabbed from doing this. Ashe. Never got shot. Ashe. I've been doing this for 20 years. And I never been in a system in jail for this. Ashe. So you can't tell me that the almighty ancestors ain't moving through the rhythm of this frequency we doing here. Right? See, I wear these colors and brothers come up and we have a conversation. I want them to see it. I want them to see me flagging this power. What that say, brother? It says you the fatherhood. And what does it say in the back, brothers and sisters? Yeah. What does it say? Yeah. What does it say in the front? You the All right. So they ask me, yo, what you claiming, brother? Oh, I'm claiming the ancestors. The blood of the almighty ancestors in my veins. The blood of Marcus Garvey in my veins. I sue who to Malcolm X. I sue who to Martin Luther King. I sue who to the Panther because I'm a Panther Cub. That's what, and when you drop that, that's why I ain't been shot, stabbed, jumping with the juice and lie. Right? Because the end, I'm crazy. That nigga's crazy. <laughs> yeah, you better believe it. Yeah, you better, and you better know it. Because you gotta be. In order to love your people in this state. Right, brother? Okay, we're gonna read from this original intent. So, brother, you read the historical origins part from the top to the bottom. And then we're getting to you read the acronym. <clears throat> Alright, listen up, brothers and sisters. The Blood and Crip organization um, in parentheses in LA and folk and people in Chicago began as groups intended to bring unity and stability to their community. The three primary purposes of these groups were secure resources. So you repeat out the hand. Secure resources. Number one. Number two. Right? Yeah, you go. Number two. Protect the community. Protect the community. Three. Reinvest in the community. Reinvest in the community. Now hold that. Now hold that. The three primary purposes of these groups, these groups being Crips, Bloods, folks, and people from LA and Chicago, Right? Mm -hmm. The three primary, what does it mean to be primary? Primary first. primary first. Let's say it again, brother. Read that at number one. Secure resources. Y'all say it. Secure number resources. two. To protect the community. Protect the community. And number three. 
Reinvest in the community. Oh, yeah. Reinvest in the community. Can you imagine if brothers actually was living that walk right now? Who claiming that BC 506? Read on, black man. <laughs> These groups were never intended to contribute to black or black violence. Can I read that? Yeah, yeah, continue. Uh, they served as rites of passage programs for young people in the community who may not have had a stable home environment. Mm -hmm. The oral tradition held a strong role in helping to shape these youngsters into productive men and women. No one was able to advance with the organization without being passed the history and unwritten rules. Clap it up for the brother. You see the consciousness that was emanating from these brothers at the time? We're going to go into where that consciousness came from, and you read these acronyms. All right. Y'all following? Yes. Okay. Original OG acronyms. Read that shit loud, brother. Crips. Then it was Community Revolutionary Interparty Service. C-R-I-P. Next. Conscious Revolution in Progress. C-R-I-P. Next. Community Revolution in Progress. C-R-I-P. Next. Community Reform for Independence. C-R-I-P. You see that? What they were vibrating on? So the question that I'm going to answer to y'all, oh, where, where, where did they get that from? Where did they think, where did these young brothers and sisters get that from? You know what I'm saying? We continue. Read on. Now, collecting my respect in Pyro said. That's now. Continue. California Revolutionary Independent P Pistol Slinger. Right now. Keep going. Come ruthless if provoked. CRP. Continue. Criminals running it hot. See? See what, what, what we went to from then to now. <coughs> Right? Okay, continue. Bloods, a term used during the Vietnam War mean brother. People people fighting the same struggle were called brothers. Okay, then? Then brothers love overriding oppos opposition destruction. Bloods, next. Brotherly love overrides oppression dominion. Next. Power rule. Power rule. Polit ah, politically. Politically, po politically incorrect revolution united. Power rule. Next. Powerful intellectual radical unite, united soldiers. Next. Panthers in red uniforms. Stop. He said Panthers in red uniforms. Mm -hmm. Remember that note when we continue. Next. Now. Now it's pimps in red uniforms. Get up for the brother. Get up for the brother. Don't do that. Now, I got five minutes, so I got I got means I got to be light speed, and, and, it's, and I don't have enough time with y'all. But we're going we gonna to do what we need to do in, in that five minutes. So, the thing about it is this. Y'all heard a lot of affirmations in there that sound like Panthers, right? We understand the time that they came up in. The time that they came up in, right, all of the these young brothers and sisters in these hoods, especially in, in Watts and in South Central and Compton, right, all of their big homies were Panthers. And the Panther that united them was called Bunchy Carter. Mm -hmm. The big homie Bunchy Carter used to be a game begging Slauson. If y'all don't know what recognize that name Slauson in hip hop, well, Nipsey Hussle represents the Slaussons, which is the, the rich rolling 60s. Mm -hmm. Right? Rich and because they was getting money, rolling 60s, right? So, the Slaussons. And so, at that time, in LA in 65, around 65, he went up to Northern California. Or North Cal, as they call it, because you got Sur Sur Cal, Sur Southern California, you got North Cal, right? So he's from Southern California, went to North Cal, set with the big homies, right? Which is, y'all know the two big homies that started the Panthers. Name the name, I know you know the names. Oh. Huey, Huey, Bobby, right? Okay, he sat with them and they blessed him and said, yeah, we got to have an LA chapter, right? And you got to run that. Because he would, because before that, he would, he had the, he had the most biggest gang in, in, in Southern California, the, the black gang, the Slossons. Of course, you had others. You had, you had the farm. You had the farmers. You had the uh, you had the, the businessmen, and they and all of these brothers were from these communities already established. Okay, these are these are the these were what we call the forefathers or the seeds of what what after became the Crips and Bloods. So you, what happened was also there was a tension in, in the in the in the Black Power movement in the in the LA between uh, difference of ideology between the S organization ran by a brother named Ron Karenga that created the whole Ubuntu uh, uh Kwanzaa principles the US organization they're more into culture uh, African culture rituals and, and, and those ideologies and they didn't really believe in the more of the aggressive gangster side. You know what I'm saying? That the Panthers at the time in L.A. ran by, of course, a former banger, you know, Bunchy. He was more aggressive because coming from the street. So they had a different uh, points of opinion. But still, 
the US organization and the Panthers were the big homies in those communities, right? And they had a difference of opinion. So I want you to see how the consciousness of a rift starts with us. You can't blame the Crimson Bloods are a byproduct of stuff that happened before them. Because I want you to see how we went, you, I showed you the acronyms how we went from one awareness to now what we become. We went from Panther, Panthers in red uniforms, Paru, to Pips in red uniforms. Right? You see how the, the, that's, a, that's called a generation, that's called two or three generation consciousness split. Mainly because their elders had a friction that the government exploited. And we already know about the Cointel Pro. They exploited any little, any little, any little thing we had. Well, he looked at him funny. I'm going to write a letter saying, why you looked at me that black way? And, you know, we didn't have internet back then. The letters were their internet. So the government used to write a lot of their letters and send it to each other. They believed the hype. They believed the hype. It's like someone tweeting, tweeting from me to you, and I didn't tweet. But you got hackers, right? So that was the government was a hackers of letters back then, right? Same song, right? So that riff left the boy with the young brothers and sisters. But they, but the, but the inspiration of the Panthers and the US organization came up in the acronyms and them trying to do something for themselves, right? Just like brothers we used to call each other blood. We mentioned that it was it was inspired by uh, brothers in the Vietnam War because most of those who were being drafted from all parts of the country. They identified themselves as blood brothers, mainly because of the movement was going on. The whole civil rights movement made everybody bond under that. So they called each other blood or young blood. That's where the term came from, right? The young homies after them picked it up. But cuz came from the South. If you was had family from the South, hey cousin, what up cuz? You have to understand, the, 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 these, these, these words have rooted in family. Just like the folk nation, those are my folks. The people, the folks, six, those are my people. You're the people, five. Those are my peoples. My peoples mean my family. Do you see the root of family here? The root of family is folks, my relatives, peoples, my relatives, colors, my cousins, blood, my brothers. Our whole thing is based on family, a dysfunctional family that started originally as a righteous family. Right? But when it's not cultivated, when you have brother, the elder talked about lack of economics, Crack cocaine came, everybody became very wealthy in the hood. So you have, you have people in your set, you know, work hundred, could get a couple hundred thousand dollars, getting millions of dollars in your set. It changed the whole dynamic, right? So that the 80s actually crystallized the, the, uh, what we know as the blueprint for today. Oh, uh, yes, brother, real quick, before, before I wrap up. Yeah. Uh, I'll just talk to Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm just trying to get, trying to get as much into y'all without overwhelming y'all. Y'all with me so far? Okay, good, good, good. So. These are two books right now I want to recommend ASAP. A book by, called War of the Bloods in My Veins by Brother Deshaun Jawi Morris. He's actually a, a Newark, Brick City native. Y'all heard about this brother? He's a good brother of mine, good friend of mine, uh, good, you know, another fellow blood brother. But he's, what makes him really awesome in my book is that not only does he share his, his story and how he came to be and, and how he was able to transform, but what he stands for, his whole set, 135th Power Rule, represent what he represents. And he's about building, not banging. And, he, and, and, and most of them brothers in his set, are, are brothers have jobs, brothers going to school. Some of them may still be you know, doing their thing, but majority of them make an example of what we call forward thinking in the gang community or the G community called building. So most of them, he's converted from banging to building. And you can read about his story. And he's very, he's very um, known in the streets of Newark for doing a lot of crazy, a lot of crazy awesome things. Not crazy bad things, but <laughs> crazy awesome things as far as being progressive. He's been very, he's been very forward thinking as far as part of a lot of the truths between the Brave Street Crips and him, you know, and his set and so forward. And so he's been, so so he was also responsible. I had, I had footage I was going to show you, but you know, next time he was responsible for helping me bring out OGT Rogers, the one I mentioned earlier, who told you about, I told you about the flag. OGT Rogers from the jungles. Uh, him and some black piece stones from that have a uh, chapter in um, in Harlem uh, uh, that has been um, blessed in by brothers and sisters from um, the El Rukins in Chi Town. They helped to uh, get Brother T. Rogers out here in New York in, in 07. We did a big, big rally. Uh, my family at the time had a, a wellness and community center. We had over 3,000 homies come out. I mean, it was it was the most amazing day. And what we did there, because what happened was a lot of controversy of how the bloods emerged on the East Coast, and the controversy was they, the, the, the OGs that came in initially said that OGT Rogers gave them permission. That was a controversy. 
And so it, it, it so most kids and most young people out of that time were birthed, a whole generation was birthed based on this information, right? And so we did my organization, you can find them in the neighborhood that has folks in it, that has uh, people, organization members in it, Crips and Bloods. What we did was we facilitated him to come out and we gave him a, we gave him a lifetime achievement award. He has never been given a lifetime achievement award. Because T. Rogers has been one of the uh, we hear about Tookie, OG Tookie from the Crips, and how he, before he left, was trying to make a change. But OG T. Rogers has been very, very vocal about moving, being progressive with the G's and getting them into really being fundamental, uh, accountable brothers and sisters in their community. You know, he's been doing it for over 30 years. And so, and on the East Coast, in the spirit of misunderstanding, but now, we have, now we're here, can't, can't take us back, right? What we did was, we had him in the hood. In, in my hood, we, we had him in Crown Heights, most of that is uh, what they call the UBN. That, that's that's brothers and sisters from East Coast blood. So you have you have thousands of bloods uh, from the G Shine said what they mis they miscalled GKB. The G Shine said you have a lot of brothers from um, um from Nine Trade, but it's very dense blood hood, right? So he came out and he spoke, and it was about to be some funk there, about to get because he said a few controversial things that that. It's like your father uh, recommended you, you know what I'm saying? And all the brothers, and what he said to them was, y'all can't claim the five, and the whole room erupted. And now we were right across the street from the projects. We were, we were living. So within seconds, homies went out of the center and bought so many more homies, and they were across the street. They didn't like that the big homie from Cali said they can't represent the five. What they didn't understand what he was trying to tell them is that if you're going to claim this, True freedom, justice, peace, and love. You got to live it, and you know what I mean. And, and, and he got to be accountable. And so he was able to calm it down. There was big, no balance, you know. And he was able. He, what he did for the next five hours after the rally, he was able to shake every one of their hands and speak to every one of them. They lined up for four blocks to see this brother. They never. You talking about somebody they've heard about that was responsible for them, mm -hmm. and they never met him. And we facilitated that. Mm -hmm. So give it up for the elders and the youth coming together. Right? <laughs> You know, unfortunately, the media's not going to continue to have you, you hear about on Twitter. You're not going to hear about these progressive times, you know, that brother, before, I know you hear about the Baltimore riots and how Christian Bloods came together, but that wasn't the first time. April 1992 was when, you know, in, in our recent history in the 90s, is when that really came together with Watts, South Central, and Compton, and they said, we're going to work on healing this thing, you know? And but you, as y'all know, it's a continuous effort. Because what happens is, you have, o, you have LOGs and YGs, that get into, they already have cases, get into some stuff. And you know, there's some elements in society that don't want us to come together. It, it, it's more money if we're fighting together. You know what I mean? You have to understand that. So peace, peace costs. Peace, and it, you can't just think peace is something all peaceful. Like there are people that don't want us to be peaceful because they won't profit on our peace. You feel me? So you have to understand that it's always agitators that are even in the sets. Everybody in the set ain't really the, the right homies. And some of them, like the Pimp Times, are co tell people that come in there and disrupt. I, I found a few in my tribe, uh, Eastside BPG. I found a few in my tribe and they tried to get me, uh, I was responsible for organizing over 3,500 Crips and Bloods um, and doing the Sean Bell rally. That was me. That was me, right there, I did that. And, when, and the main thing was they trying to put out was that the Crips and Bloods along the Latin Kings were gonna go kill cops. And, and I was the one telling the leadership, we're not doing that. This is actually an opportunity for us to be accountable. So I unified them so they can see what the, what the people and the, the community was talking about. And they can say, now what do you, I challenge you Crips and Bloods to actually be a remedy amongst yourselves. When the cops ain't in our community shooting at us, what are we gonna do, right? And I used it as a reverse, and I had brothers and sisters in, in the that I knew were already sent to, to you know cause disruption, right? And we had them remove ASAP, but you gotta be able to see these things. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the whole objective is they want you to uh, mob up and just be reactionary, but there's so much internal work to do. There's so many healing we have to go through. There's so much uh, accountability we have to go through. And brother talked about post-traumatic stress. Right? We have that just being uh, brown and black people here in, the, in this country. And then even our brothers and sisters who are Caucasian, just being around us, you're gonna have it too. If you live in America, you're gonna have post-traumatic stress. Even if it's subconscious, you're gonna have it. You know, even the way we, we, don't, we, sit, we don't sit next to each other, we kind of you know, look at each other kind of funny, and uh, I, I sit with you if you know him and I know you. So we have this thing, we don't really trust each other, right? And that shows up and as, as an extremity in the gang or the street tribe. You see, see what I'm saying? So definitely check this brother out. This is a very important book too, Uprising. This is this was chronicle around the time that the uprising happened 
in the 92 uprisings in South Central in Watts and in Compton. This is very important because this goes into the, the uh, main, main inspiration I got with putting the pamphlet together and also a lot of my um, family members that are in this book and family members help me put this together that, that, that live on the West Coast and are from the West Coast. And so this book goes into the history. You really want to know the history and really see what I'm talking about. Oh, can we see something I was really talking about, right? And get more into the science. This is online. <coughs> Look this up. Uh, a chapter there I want you to write down a page or two is from OG Twilight from Circle City Pyro. He goes into the dynamics of the Crip Africans. We talked about community revolution progress. He talks about, he, listen, they drop so much stuff in there. They tell you about, like, what was prophesized in gangland documentaries on YouTube is that, uh, you know, the Rip was only about uh, over a leather jacket while the Crips, you know, started cripping up, you know, over a leather, beating somebody from a leather jacket. That was only one incident, unfortunately. But there were other incidences of what stopped, which caused the disunity. And it was real petty. Like, like a girl used to be a crypt and she became a blood. It's, it's a lot of crazy stuff that you can see, wow, we really started the war between because of some petty stuff, right? So if you really want to understand the psychology, how it unfolded, and the waves, like the time when they were disunified, the time they came together, how they started to actually, for a minute in the 70s, be accountable, and actually do align, they align with the mayors, and their cities, they align with the government to actually get funding. Uh, there's some profound stuff that is really not talked about in pop culture that these brothers and sisters called Crips and Bloods, and even in Chicago, folks and people were being progressive, but this it's, it's, it's not documented enough to keep you aware, you know? And a lot of times, our politicians, and what we call rappers, they're our politicians, you know, they only glorify the, the banging and the slinging side. You know, not with, not, not with the uh, God bodies called the culture of freedom, which we all have. And as, as I proved to you today, it's in all of our literature, right? But we just have to have a situation where we remind brothers and sisters. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna close up and, and, and leave you with a, a video that I did called Gangsta Salute. Uh, uh, for those that don't know, I, I am an uh, independent artist myself. Uh, I've run my own independent label. I put out countless um, albums. Uh, from all types of ways, but I've also worked with many different um, established artists, everybody from Gang to uh, Jada Kiss to uh, Dead Prez. I have recorded for all of them, but this is a song called Gangsta Salute, and um, it pretty much culminates through visual, everything I just said to y'all. What I did was I wanted to put out media out there that showed empowerment of the building, not the band. The footage you see is a culmination of everything we've been talking about, from the acronyms, to brothers coming together, and that's what we need to be showing and making viral. Because there's so much negativity we show and making viral, and we're not showing the uh, story of us doing the building. So I appreciate you, brothers and sisters. I'm about to uh, press play on that now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.